Hello guys and welcome to yet another unboxing for Asha's Rise of the Phoenixborn. Right out of the master set, we have the pre-constructed deck for Aerodel. Aerodel Summer Guard. Summer Guard, right. And an exemplary plug here, Covenant subscriptions, you can get all of your Ashes packs delivered right to your door. Isn't that nice? As they come out without even trying. I did it. You I'm are earning my keep. Officially. Let's, let's, uh, let's kick this thing off with Aerodel herself. Uh, the summoner, the Phoenix born, I should say. I'm in the, the Queen of Water zone. The Queen of Water. You should be so jazzed about this. And I am. I was initially, and then I realized she was kind of a controlly type uh, Phoenix born. So let's talk about her for a second, but then I want to understand why you don't want okay, to play Aerodel. Let's do it. Jump in with this guy's here. Let's talk about Aerodel Summer Guard, Phoenix born of Evermist Valley. Sounds like a very pleasant place, like the Shire. It sounds so happy. Battlefield of 8, which is massive. Uh, health of 16, <laughs> which is small. Comparatively, uh, compared to Cole, it's still pretty good, but ultimately not much. Spellboard is four, which is about oh, average, about where we've seen. Oh, you expect that? It kind of makes us do this. <laughs> That's gonna and be a gift. finally, no. we have her ability, Water Blast. See, this is so everything about this. Is demon. Go ahead. Side action, Exhauster, one leaf, which is the class die. Spend a leaf for nature. Deal two damage to a target unit. You know, that's very comparable to some other cards that we've seen, like uh, Cole's ability, which is one damage, to damage. So discard a card. So here you're spinning a dice instead of a card. And a side action. And uh, it exhausts, which is important. That is important. So you can do it once, and let me tell you, guys, two damage to a target unit is great. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> I mean, you have this side Especially action. Especially the side action. And you have the frog uh, that you can do one damage with that she comes with anyway. Nature Magic can do that natively. Uh, this is just called controlling your opponent's stuff. And anytime you can do that, it's really good. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, you know this. You're an old school burn player. Uh, I'm a like modern burn, school burn player. Burn is a model of deck in any card game where you're doing direct damage straight to things that is not uh, happening through uh, creatures or anything on the board, but rather right out of your hand, burn them down. Kill all your opponents. Directly stuff. kill them. Yeah. Now, and I mean, I think that's there are other Phoenix form with abilities that do damage, right? We've already seen Cole. We're going to see others. But to me, the most significant thing about her in comparison to the other Phoenix born is her Battlefield of Eight. Oh yeah. That that yeah. is that is the style here that is most. That's the biggest stat on this card. It's, it's not deal. her ability actually, which is interesting. Yeah. But that is the biggest stat, and we'll see why she needs so many slots in a minute. Well, let's see why. Take a look at the back. A little of the full art there. Don't That's, forget the full arts back there, and it's good looking. That that little touch is one of my favorite parts. Yeah, the whole that is that carries through the whole experience. Just they didn't have to, but that's the back of the card. Full sure blades. All you. right, next Thanks up we have Amanda. shifting mist, which I've been told by a few people that it is good. Okay. Myself. Well, we'll see. It's a, it's a ready spell. Go we'll to your spell board. It's an action, and then the mask. It's the mid grade level on the illusion dice. You know, it's the most common space of a die. The mid grade level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, wow. side action exhaust. <laughs> Change two dice in your active pool to a side of your choice. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's phenomenal. So you're saying that this is essentially uh, meditating without discarding cards. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's fine. That seems great. Right? It's, I'm not complaining. It's, you know you're going to come at me about that? Look like you're going to be hostile towards me. Well, saying I'm, I'm very rarely hostile. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm just saying it's meditate without spinning cards. I just think it's... You always want this on your board. Yeah. It... it in my opinion. It, is it reason enough to run a single uh, illusion die to get the, the mask to absolutely. cast it? It's, you run a single yeah. illusion die and you run one of these and you start with it in your hand. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. I think I agree with Zach. That's totally I, I don't know if that's just like automatic, but that's pretty, it's pretty hard to argue against just having two, two dice to whatever side you want every turn as a side action. Seems very useful. I would say that if you're already running the Illusion School of Magic, absolutely, definitely yeah. include this card. And of course, if you focus it three times and cast it three times in a round, I mean, that's not something to scoff at. So no, it could be overkill, could not really be. Good. Put it in your decks, try it out. No, I, I, two thumbs up. That's very good card. card. Yeah. Zach gives this one two thumbs up. Shifting Mist. Let's talk about Reflections in the Water, an alteration spell. Look at that and art, man. Goes right onto a unit and it's like, whoa, oh no. It's like an old version of it's a young lady. It's an old me. Yeah, wow. Uh, it reminds me of that scene in Lord of the Rings, right? In the looking, looking in the, the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a main action to cast this and one mask, the class side, of course, on the illusion die. It says, as long as this spell is attached to this unit, it is considered to have no abilities other than inexhaustible abilities. We call this an old school blanking effect. A blanky blank. Put it on something, it no longer has a thing. And then we also have an inexhaustible ability on the card itself, respark. 
at the cost of a single basic die. So if this is going to be uh, going away, you can pay a basic die to put it right back into your hand. That's really strong. So it's a permanent blinking effect on the board, right? For any of the inexhaustible card text, So like a lot of good stuff. A lot of stuff that has really important abilities, uh, like we're about to get to Lay uh, drag wire too. in this in this pack. Well, even things we've seen. Right? What's the little rust, guy, the coal guy that can do a damage? Just anchor knot. Anchor I mean, you're not. not gonna. Are you gonna blink anchor knot? Well, here's the thing, right? <laughs> your your uh, it depends on who you're playing against. Your battlefield's normally not that huge, right? Yeah. It's four or five. Yeah. So getting rid of a unit isn't always the best option. I, I've had a, I've played against you in this where yeah. it's like you have five things out and it's like well. I don't want. I don't want to kill. The, I like I'm these guys. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I can handle this. I can't handle random four attack guy that strikes first, dropping into the field yeah. or what, whatever yeah. the case may be. So, and it resparks. So, I don't. When, what this one comes down to, I think, is looking at the card pool and looking at certainly the meta that you're playing in. Even if that's just you against your wife or your kids or you're going to a game store or whatever. What are they running? And. Are they exhaustible abilities or inexhaustible abilities? If this is something that you can blank, if they're bringing big, heavy-hitting stuff that has a really good ability, this is an incredible card. If it's all inexhaustible stuff, like the Silver Snakes have the inexhaustible, inexhaustible ability yeah. to get the status token, yeah. uh, that kind of stuff is less important. So it's really, it's kind of a card that's going to generally always be useful, but sometimes it will be like crushing if you bring it to the right tournament, the right event, whatever. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely what we're looking at, and again, I think that what we're seeing already out of the Airedale deck is the absolute power of the Illusion Dice Bowl. Not only do you get Shifting Mist, which is an incredible tempo play, you also get a blanking effect that can solve a lot of problems that your opponent might throw at you. For sure. So and already I, looking like a strong school. I think the one, just that, that card, one last thing to mention is that you can play it on your own things. You so can. If you ever yeah. have units that actually have some kind of negative text, maybe have really good stats, but it's like after this guy is after exhausted, he goes away. Yeah. And it's like, oh, not anymore. Not anymore. He just hangs out. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Or when this guy exhausts, exhaust twice, right? Or yep. any kind of negative effect. So that's just a cool way Keep to Keep an eye out. Reflections in the water, big All one. All right, next up we have Mist Typhoon. It's an action spell. You discard it. Action in the class die for the illusion and the nature. Deal one damage to all opponent's units. You may draw a card. Am I having deja vu here? Uh, it sounds like 100 blades to me. What is this? Okay, so this is essentially the same as Cole's 100 blades, his special card. That card does one damage to the enemy Phoenix Born as well, which is, in terms of valuing the card, relatively insignificant. I mean, it, it's something, it's but it's damage, not... It's damage, but it's not the difference. Maybe. Not a huge deal. Now, the big difference is that his only costs two basic yep, to cast. Yep, costs the two different classes. So it's class easier dice. to cast, and this one costs two class dice, which is still pretty reliable. But, I mean, it does mean you have to run those two types yes. to play this card, versus yes. Cole, he doesn't have to run any type. He's wide open, yeah. yeah. He, can, he can run any schools of magic that he wants. But... If you pair these together... You pair them together. Okay, that's what we were talking about earlier. What if you pair out of the mess with 100 blades? Now all of a sudden you're dealing one damage to your opponent's side of the board very often, which cuts out a lot of units and conjurations from this game, which also means that the board should be relatively clear for your own guys to swing through. And as long as you have an answer, like Reflections in the Water is a start, and there's a steady gaze coming up that you can control your opponent's significant threats that aren't going to get cleared kill. by 1 and 2 damage pings, then you got yourself a deck, as yeah. far as we're concerned. You're ready to go to a tournament. To Miss Typhoon, incredible card. Anytime you can do one damage to the whole, everything on your opponent's side of the board is going to get at least one thumbs up. And this is, Plat Hat is baking in answers to two potentially problematic situations in card games. One is low cost, low attack, low health units are too easy to swarm. And they brought that together with the battlefield mechanic, so you can't really do that. And then also a lot of clearing effects like Miss Typhoon and Hunter Blades. And a lot of like deal one damage here, deal one damage there, two damage from Airedale herself. And then also having answers to big guys too. Yep. Uh, so we see some exhaust this unit or do these kinds of things, especially in this deck. And uh, we'll get to that here in a second. But there are two ways to answer your opponent in this game. So it's a very fluid kind of thing. I feel like you have to have answers to everything in your deck if you want to have a really well-rounded and good chance. Just, just having that many answers in the card pool is good. Yeah, it always good. They can go crazy. Let's talk about Out of the Mist. This is an action spell. You discard it. It's a side action, that important, kills me. and it has a frog and a wolf. So those are the, the two biggest uh, dice types. So it's very tough to cast. Uh, and it says deal X amount of damage to a target unit, draw a card. You may draw a card, I should say. And X is the number of units you have in play. So this is a good mid to late game 
answering some serious threats. If you can get your board built up, this is a consistent threat, and I think players have to honor this out of Aerodel, and specifically anyone who's running Illusion and Nature together. Sure, and I think with Shifting Mist, it's not going to be hard to get those two, two no. dice types. You're going to probably start with it in your hand, especially in this deck. And then the ability, again, you were saying earlier, do you have answers for the bigger things? And you have it right here. She has a uh, battlefield of eight. Yep. She's going to be able to get a lot of units on the board. It's a big old battlefield. You know, you spend a side action to do, like, the side, this is a side action is what makes it Love side actions. There are other cards that are actions that do, like, three direct damage or uh, whatnot. But, like, a side action means you can still do crazy things. Yep. Yeah, so that's huge on the value scale. I think side action is pretty huge on the value scale. 100%. So that's a really good card. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right, next up we have Root, Gorgeous, Root Armor, which is also just a fascinating looking card. Look at her. Really Alteration nice. spell unit. It's a side Four action arms. and a leaf. Yep. It has respark one, so if it goes away, you can put it back in your hand. And it just gives you plus two life. All right, that seems good, right? It's especially good because it, it provides a little context for these abilities like Miss Typhoon and Aerodel herself. It's like, oh man, my little guys can't make it through this field of AoE. Maybe you start running three root armors. And then you can always pop it back in hand and put it on your next cast. It's, it's a very, very good design. I feel like it's a good card to have in the card pool. It makes some things that you might want to keep on the board a lot easier to deal with. So. Yeah, and it also obviously pairs with cards. Uh, I think we're going to get to Jessa later. But the units that you know do X damage to your opponent's Phoenix more and X is the number of damage you just took up to your health. And so yeah. like having extra health means that you can... Do more. Of you that can always do chance. more. So, so rude armor, always good. Yeah, pretty good. Nice little attachment. Uh, moving on to steady gaze, it's an action spell that you discard to use. It is a main action and two masks from the illusion school. Place two exhaustion tokens on a target unit. This is just such a good card. It, it's a. It's. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. What illusion brings to this game is an unprecedented level of control in the form of all these exhaustions and blanking and changing your dice. Man, consider this this school. Like I'm amped on this school, having having read all these cards now. Imagine. I don't want to say it's the best school, but Place it's, two it's really Place two exhaustion on a unit. You know what? You know what we talked about Iron Rhino. We talked about Iron Rhino the in Iron the Rhino. Uh, in the coal unboxing. Yeah. This is why this is why it's not that good. I mean, that's how, there are ways to like remove exhaustion, right? There are, yeah, there are cards yeah. that do that. And so, then we need two cards to make Iron Rhino work. Uh, or yeah, we need three cards to make Iron Rhino work. Right? And this is, just, this is what makes, uh, like, there's a huge, just, we could have a 40 minute video on the Iron mm -hmm. Rhino's viability or not. We don't need to go there <laughs> it's again. a one minute video, okay? <laughs> but the, it's the circle, right? You run the big guy, and it's like, all right, well, but my opponent has to play the answers to the big guy. And then you're like, all right, well, then I have answers to the answers. But. For the guy with the answers, that's where it stops. Yeah. I'm going to run answers to units no matter what units you're playing. Yeah. If you run yeah. the Iron Rhino or a big unit, just being able to exhaust something twice is crazy. It's incredible. Not even a big unit. Absolutely it's like incredible. For just the, the dancer that focuses or exhausts, or what is it called? <laughs> Not exhaust. I'm, uh, yeah, exhaust. It's exhaust. Yeah. Exhaust to like put an exhaust on someone. Um, I guess it is exhaust. Exhaust, focus, tap. Neil, whatever you want to turn call it upside it. down. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the thing that exhausts to exhaust uh, the unit exhausts to exhaust another unit. You put two focus exhausts on that. Now they can't use it. Turn this card upside down to use this ability. Yeah, maybe just make it. I've been there. Anyways, two exhaustion on a unit of your choice. Absolutely. And it's only masks. Jam of a card. Yeah. It's a hard word to say. Masks. Masks. It's like it's cotton. It's like mean. yelling cotton. All right. Next up, we have a massive growth. Massive Alteration growth. spell unit. Uh, action. A leaf. A basic. Inexhaustible, all this text. Yeah. This spell can only be attached to a unit with an attack value of two or less. Okay. Spell guard, this spell cannot be affected by an opponent's spell. Fleeting, discard this card at the end of this round. All right, so it's a, it's a temporary effect, and uh, it's and it, pretty much immune to everything. I mean, if you cast it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Plus four attack, plus four life. Plus four, plus four. Yeah. All I can hear in my head right now is uh, Wrecking Ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's exactly it, though. See, this is, this is a really, really strong card. It provides an immediate threat. Your opponent has to deal with it, and it's self-limited in that it can only be attached to attack two or less uh, kind of unit. And then it goes away. Absolutely. But and I think that's good. This defines the structure as what makes Ashes so cool. Yeah. You cannot be in a position where your opponent can clear your board or lock down your board and then come in for an attack because you have threats like this. They can put this on a little guy and suddenly they're swinging for a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And it's main action. And so it's always action. main action to set this up. Can you respond? You can answer it. As a wizard, can you respond? If you cannot, then, then you take eight damage. Little Miss damage Spirit just got huge. Yeah. It's going to wreck your face. And, you know, I think this is one thing that uh, is worth keeping an eye on and something from an actual, like, a deep analytical level of this game. 
You have cards like Steady Gaze, and they are not limited by cost or attack or anything like that. So it immediately puts bigger units and tougher guys on the chopping block because we have easy control effects going on. Like if, the, if Steady Gaze was on a unit with attack two or less, exhausted twice, or three or less, that's one thing. Yeah. It's gonna hit everything for the rest of the game. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind, and we've seen these limitations like on massive growth, so they're not, not doing that on the control effects. So that's yeah. something to keep in mind that this curve is always going to stay around this kind of mid-range of two to three attack. I don't think we're going to see a lot more than that unless it's got some kind of protection from exhausting abilities. Yep, or it's got, you know, it's like the Silver Snake that can build up into bigger yeah. than that, but yeah. it takes so much effort to, to get there. Which is why Massive Growth is so important, because yep. it is ultimately going to make your small threats into big threats all of the sudden, and that's sure. a strong ability in this game. Uh, let's talk about these Mist Spirits, man. Let's summon some Mist Spirits. Cuckoo Cuckoo. Uh, it's a spell board, you put it down, it's a main action, and we, we just have to note, in case you guys haven't noticed this, it took me a little while, all the spell books on these summon uh, spells are different. They yeah, have different they graphics and, and art on it. And it is just the perfect amount of flavor. It, it really seals things up for, for old Steven. Yeah, like the actual book and the border of the art is the same, but the, the It just looks like an old spell book page. It's yeah. so cool. Uh, Alright, so once it's on the board, and it only costs a main action, which is one of its strongest, it's simply, it can be a tempo stall as well. It's a main action, an exhaustion, and then one mask to place a mist spirit onto your battlefield. You may spend an additional basic when activating the spell to place an additional mist spirit onto the battlefield. This can be good. This can be, so mist spirits are, we'll just go right to yeah, them. let's get to the mist spirits. Conjurations, so one attack, one life, zero recover. So, a little swarmy guys. About... Aside from being a 0-1 or a 1-0, which I guess wouldn't exist, a 0-1 is the only thing that is more basic than a Miss Spirit. These are just, this is like the, you know, the, the dollar bill of ashes. It's like the penny. It's the penny. Yeah, maybe it's the penny, but these, nobody these, uses these pennies. The pennies. Nobody uses pennies. Well, you do when you need to. Yeah, a lot of people throw pennies away. That's a real thing. Like 17% of all pennies are thrown away. Really? Yeah. And they're more expensive to make than they're worth. It's a real thing. We should do something about that, America. Why don't we stop using paper? All right, summon Miss Spirit is so. So I have I have a lot to say about this actually. Um, He's cute. Whenever I started playing Ashes, uh, my main opponent was Silver Snakes, and as it turned out, I, I was like, oh, cool. I'll cast some Miss Spirits, and then it's like, kill that Miss Spirit, gain status tokens. Kill that Miss Spirit, gain status, tokens. and I, it immediately became untenable for me. Like, mm -hmm. I could do nothing about that. Uh, so there are ways to make your opponent pay for spamming out a lot of low-cost units. Hunter Blades, already we've seen the Mist Typhoon. All these Mist Spirits get crushed, right? So what is the use case for Mist Spirits? Have you been on the receiving end of Mist Spirits where you said, man, those are really causing me problems? Aside from powering up your, like, your spells here that are based on number of units, like Out of the Mist, do they last? Are they worth investing in at all? Well, I mean, I think the thing about Miss Spirit is that you can start the game with a Summon Miss Spirit in your hand, right? right? A single card, put it down, and now you have a way to essentially get two units yep. on the board at any given time. And that is the main benefit here. Is that so you get two essentially to block, right? To block. It's mm -hmm. not about attacking, it's just having dudes on the board. Yeah. Which is why you have like Airedale that has eight spots on her battlefield. Like, you can. You can afford to play some Miss Spirit. So these cute little guys are just getting thrown in front of terrifying conjurations to soak up the damage. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's really just about having lots of things on the field. And so they might play a Miss Typhoon and deal, kill everything, and that's fine. But then you just pay one, pay two, put two more back on Yeah, the board. put them back on. And there they so are. Like, in, that, in, in the Silver Snake instance, I was getting a benefit from killing the Miss Spirits, right, which right, was right. annoying. Which is cool to have baked into the game. Yeah, but it gives most opponents that aren't uh, Maoni or Silver Snakes, then it's not that big of a deal, right? Yeah. It's like, okay, you're spending a card with coal to get rid of this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Like, it, no the, problem. the math is just there for you. So Miss Spirits are pretty good. Yeah, so plop them out as a threat to basically uh, block. That's it. Yeah. And I mean, it can sense. also ping. Like, you can get some attacks. The, uh, the cool part of attacking this game is you can attack like six things at once. Yep. And each of your opponent's units slash conjurations can only block one thing at a time. So if you do fill out your eight board against like a Maoni only has like very few units on the Send board, the Miss Spirits. You just send them all in. And, send them uh, all. magic can happen. All right, so we have the Summon Butterfly Monk. It's a ready spell, spell board. It's an action. Action, exhaust, and a froggy. Place a Butterfly Monk conjuration onto the battlefield. A froggy. The, butter, the froggy. Froggy. Nice. Butterfly Monk, Conjuration, Battlefield, uh, has Unit Guard, which is fantastic. This unit may guard a unit that is being attacked. It also has Inexhaustible, Last Blessing 1, when this unit is destroyed, remove a wound token from a target unit or Phoenix Morn. Yeah. 
X, X equals the number of summon butterfly monk spells on your spell board, which is its life. So one attack, X life is the number of those spells on your spell board, and then recover one. All right, so it can have, essentially if you, if you max it up on the focus, it has three life. Mm -hmm. So one, three, unit guard, and you can have up to five of them out. So I, I don't know, like I, I've, I've been hit or miss with these guys, and I, I know a lot of people make a good case for them. Obviously unit guard, unit guard is important, yeah. okay? It is very important. You're, it's just a main action to get the spell down, and then it's just a primo nature die to get one onto the table. So it's worth having one. I have not been in a situation where I see multiple butterfly monks able to pile up onto the board. Uh, if you're playing like a pretty well-oiled game of Ashes, you know what I mean? Like there's not, it's not like you're gonna count on having four of these guys out so that sure. they all have four health and it looks really nice. Uh, removing the wound token is a nice little benefit. Uh, sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's doing nothing, like most abilities, but it's it's a minor little fun thing, and it's good. Uh, you know, I don't know. What do you, well, are I, you into this? I think like... If you're in the nature, you probably run them for the unit guard alone. The unit guard's important. Yeah. Because that's just how you protect your big, important units from getting yep. destroyed by other big, important units. But the, the health is based on the number of spells that you have. So I actually think the most common use of this is going to be a single spell, you want it to have one health because you want to just block, die, recover a health, and put another one out. So at that point, it's like an improved mist spirit in that it can guard units as well as just standing in front of uh, yeah. your Yeah, it's just spell. a little more expensive and you don't get two and that All right. kind of thing. All but right, so are you saying yet again that we're throwing these beautiful, lovely, uh, happy units just in front of angry attacks? I mean, is that really what this is about? Someone's got to have the job. Well, they're certainly not bringing the the one attack. Let me tell you. Yeah. It's not... And I mean, just just to be clear too, like there's kind of like a, a headlock you can put with it mm -hmm. on, which is like I have a couple butterfly monks out. I have some mist spirits. You can't really attack or kill anything because if you do, I just heal and then put more out. Yep. And it's just yep. a loop, and it's really frustrating and annoying. You sound like you've been at the receiving end of this before. Not once, not <laughs> never. That's what uh, Hypnotize is all about. Well, wait, let's finish it off with the Blue Jaguar. This so is her can, card. This is her card. This is her card. It's got her uh, portrait in the bottom right there. Uh, it's a main action to, to put the spell down. It also takes an exhaustion, a main action, and then two basics, just two basics, to place a Blue Jaguar onto the battlefield. And what is the Blue Jaguar, you say? It's probably terrible. Uh, well, it's attack two, life two, recover zero, which is already pretty good for two basic symbols. That's not bad at all. Has an ability gaze one. After a unit comes into play on an opponent's battlefield, you may spend one basic to place one exhaustion token on that unit. Well, <laughs> that is uh, that is real good. Let me tell you, this is the card. I mean, everyone who plays against Aerodel, you, you play against this and you think to yourself, is that really how that works? Yeah, you just get tromped by Jaguar. Is it that good? Now, I will say, one of the beautiful things of Ashes is that when a card is exhausted, it's blank. It's blank, yep. So, one of the best ways to get around the old blue Jag is to make sure he's blank. Yep. But until he's blank, he is a pain. Because this isn't limited. He doesn't exhaust do this. Yeah. Right. You play a unit, you, he pays one. It's a basic. Focus. Yeah, it's just a basic dice. So, That's you really, I mean, against Aerodel, it becomes an even, even more important tempo, basically, stall race. Where can you get Aerodel out of basic dice to use this ability, and or can you get this Jaguar exhausted so that this ability is no longer active? Or can you put a Reflections in the water on it? You know, like, so, so there are answers to it, but this is definitely, okay. Aerodel brings a card to the board that definitely dictates the opponent's style of play more than any card that I have yet seen. Uh, out of the master set. Well, and it's, you know, you start the game and they're like, I'm gonna put some of the Blue Jaguar on the board. And then it's like, oh crap. Like, yeah, of course you are. You're starting with Because you immediately, you either have an answer yep. on that turn, or you better get a unit on the board before that Jaguar comes out. And you should. I mean, you should have an answer to a very big or important unit in your opening hand of Ashes. So one of the cards that you choose better have it. Is Aerodel gonna take a Golden Veil or something that's gonna cancel stuff or uh, protect the Blue Jaguar? Probably. This is why we this play is, the game. This is the game. It's this beautiful. Game. And a lot of times, it's sort of one of the situations, too, I know in other games, you'll have like a very powerful card that people kind of play around or are afraid of. And with the Jaguar, you do get exhausted when you come in, but there's only five cards in their opening hand. Yep. So sometimes you just got to play stuff, let it be exhausted, take some damage, and then actually have ready units the next and, time. And honestly, having played Aerodel pretty extensively, what you run into is that you can handle the problem right now, and it seems like everything's going great. And then the next turn comes, and it's like, wait, wait a minute. Okay, now how am I going to deal with those snakes now? Yeah. Or how am I going to deal with the, uh, you know, the hammer knights now? Like, better draw them steady gazers. What's problem? What's going on? So that's uh, that's Aerodel, guys. I, I think 
a great mix of really just a lot of control in this deck. There is uh, a lot of exhausting your opponent's stuff with the Jaguar and the, the Gaze, Steady Gaze. Uh, there's a lot of protection for your caster here. A lot of protection in the form of the Mist Spirits and the Butterfly Monks. Healing even is there. What yep. she's not bringing in this deck is offense. So it's going to be a long, drawn-out, controly type game. And that's ultimately what I was not attracted to for Aridel, is that it's this kind of long process of grinding your opponent down one hit point at a time, one hit point at a time, two hit points, maybe get a massive growth and a big swing in there every now and again, uh, and then slowly win the game. Well, so. you're kind of counting on your opponent not to be able to handle you. Right. right because right. if you let it drag on too long, a good player is going to have answers or a way to, to handle Aridel. Yeah. So you have to be able to, once you have control, be able to finish the game. Yeah. And that's... Part of the pre-build is it does like offense, so... Yeah. It tries to make up for it with massive growth. So that's really where your plays have to come from. But at the same time, yeah. taking an Aerodol deck and, and seeing how to give it some teeth, how to really punch it through, whether or not it's bigger units, bigger allies, maybe some, some of the Hypnotize if you want to splash with that. Uh, maybe just take the Illusion and the Nature, add a couple dice from another Magic School, see what you can get into. You can easily put some offense into this. Really, deck. really good ways so to, to to look into this. Or the other option is to go hard control. So we're talking about as much damaging your enemy unit stuff, as much exhausting your enemy unit stuff, uh, those kinds of things that are going to allow you to just run the board and make sure that everything that needs to be controlled will be controlled. Sure. So. Well, she's really good. Uh, she's commonly thought of as one of the best Phoenix born. So yeah. at least we're now. exploring. But hey, we're still exploring the game. What do you think guys? Are we right? Are we wrong? What's what Let is us your know. testing? Leave a comment. Let us know, yeah, leave a comment for sure. Subscribe to the channel if you want more Ashes content of course. And if you'd like every single Ashes release delivered right to your door, well we do that. It's called Kevin's subscriptions. Check it out. So just subscribe to Ashes and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. We've got so many more of these Phoenix Born unboxings, so check them out and uh, we'll catch you there. See you.